everyone welcome to architectural blender channel and today we will announce a very important features that has been added to blender 2.83.6 yeah it sounds random right it is the LTS version of uh, blender so how it will be um, that it has a new feature well it happened that we have now the capability to use Steam VR on Blender 2.83.6, and that is really amazing. Firstly, you will install Blender 2.83.6 from the link below. You will find it. It's Blender.org anyway, and you will find this neat version. Of course, I have uh, already enabled the Steam VR, but it will be enabled automatically anyway. So for this uh, trial, I'll just um, open a very simple scene of uh, a robot that I was going to do a tutorial with it, but uh, it turned out that it, it is a really good demo because it includes sound and everything uh, that uh, makes the VR experience way too nice. So to enable the VR experience, you will have to go to preferences and then add-ons. Type in VR and you will find VR it's seen in inspection. And here you go, you are now ready. So, uh, is there is anything that is way too uh, complicated to start it? No, you will just, if you are a Steam VR or you have HTC uh, headset, the classic one, is a new one that is uh, called uh, whatever it is, <laughs> anything that relates to Steam VR will work directly from inside. You don't have to go outside and install OpenXR like Oculus Rift and Microsoft Mixed Reality. That, that I guess they have fixed it? I don't know. But it, you can just dive into the VR session by just pressing on play. And you are in. Way too simple. Uh, so let's see how I'm going to experience that. Here is the HTC headset that I will use and I will try to uh, have a peek inside the lens so you can see that we have the actual scene, blender scene, here it is, there are some red because you know it, it is not so obvious but it actually works, it, you, you can see inside that we have, here it is, the focus has been corrected and what is really crazy about that, you can make uh, the animation starts on and you can check out and as you can see, we can start out animation that we have seen in the intro I'll try to check the room, oh here it is <laughs> it is crazy as you can see that the VR experience is working with animations and it's quite uh, neat. It is not perfect, but it is nice, really nice. You can nice. see that we, you, you have the complete VR experience using materials and all that stuff. But the sad news is that you can't use this for um, the rendering session of Eevee. You can just uh, use it uh, neatly nice on... Uh, material preview mode and uh, it's uh, it is working really nicely okay anyway let's stop this and uh, get back to the computer hey we came back to bc again uh, as we have seen that the performance of material preview is quite nice, nice. but the problem is that in the vr session um the actual rendering is completely slow it is <laughs> it is pointless to uh, make a VR experience even at the lower I've made the cube size like 64 and everything is that in shadow mode is 64 and nothing happens it's it's quite too slow to control uh, and I've uh, disabled uh, volumetrics and all that stuff but nothing happens it's just too slow very slow and what is really surprising is that I have discovered that the screen space reflections really performs better when turned on. <laughs> if you turned off the uh, 
the screen space reflections, you will have issues uh, in material preview, which is way too crazy. I actually didn't expect that, but it has a better uh, performance in some way. I actually don't know. But in, uh, anyway, everything works but the depth of field and the shadows, which is a way too important. Volumetrics, the heavy stuff. The scene isn't that huge, it's just 100k, around 100k, and it performs okay. It performs that you can see your scene and uh, enjoy the, uh, the animations and all that stuff. It, it is not that bad, actually. And of course, it performs nicely in this mode, <laughs> this solid mode, um, which I, I see it's, it's not bad just to inspect your scene, which is... This tool is intended for right now, uh, but uh, I think that in the very, very near future, um, and after applying the Vulkan uh, engine or whatever it's called inside Blender, it will be a top notch in everything uh, like uh, faster EV renderings and uh, actual ray tracing, uh, VR experience will be improved, and uh, many things will be better uh, when applying Vulkan inside Blender. And I think that the uh, they are very fast, applying everything very pretty fast. I actually uh, suspected that they are going to um, to support the Steam VR inside Blender in uh, the near future because of the OpenXR nature of dealing with things. So what else we can say about this feature? Um, for landmarks, they are not so intuitive actually. You will have to click on it. So you will have to, uh, you know, someone is watching, wearing the Z headset, and someone is uh, changing scenes. So you can use these landmarks to change scenes uh, quickly, instead of just uh, applying or making uh, the camera as a default. Uh, so it is not that big deal, but I think that this has been improved in Blender 2.9, so I'm waiting for the support of uh, Steam VR inside uh, Blender 2.9 and, uh, and of course the future releases. Uh, but in that case, how to use this? Uh, we, we actually don't have much to say here. <laughs> Positional tracking is just if, if you are going to walk, if you have a room space, so you can walk with the, uh, with the camera or something. Uh, with your headset and instead of just rotating your head uh, So it adds the walking capability. That's it Then you have floor floor is just um, making this ground plane appear That's it if you disabled it. It won't appear in VR session. I Think if we it's appearing here, but I think inside the 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 headset the, it, it won't appear Annotations, way too self-explanatory. If you have annotations, it will appear in VR. Okay, so it's way too obvious. So let's delete that. Landmarks, which is the hard part in this feature. <laughs> this is the most, um, you know, complicated things that you have to know about this feature. Um, but it's easy, of course. There is nothing. It's almost, there's, there's, there's nothing to explain, but uh, this has just some tricky parts. If you, uh, it, uh, by default, you will have a landmark that attach to the scene camera, uh, which is the active camera, by the way. And uh, you can add uh, more landmarks with other cameras, like in this landmark, you can add another camera. I've called the camera of the scene other. And I've created a new landmark, and that's it. You can remove landmarks, but you have you still have to uh, get one landmark, of course. You will have to leave it. Show VR camera if you are uh, here. It is. This is the VR camera in blue, as you can see. So when you uh, move the headset like this, you see this blue camera right here. Here it is. This is the uh, this is the current camera of the VR, and this is the mirrored session. Of course, it, uh, this is what you see inside the headset. 
So, and that's it. These are the features inside the VR session or the VR inspection tool of Blender. You can download the scene from the link below uh, just to experience it with the soundtrack and all that crazy stuff. It's, it's really nice uh, when you uh, enter the VR and see uh, this kind of animation. I, I know it's a little bit clumsy and <laughs> it's not that clean. Uh, it's just intended for, you know, the demonstrations. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully we can... Yeah.